Hallelujah. The, uh, that young lady there, there was a young man. What was his name? Xavier. You come on up here. You hear, uh, who was the, the one that, that was prophesying the young lady? Is that Karina? Karina, I need you up here. There was a, there was a young, blonde-haired young lady wearing a sweater. She was kind of over here singing. Who's that? Natalie. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And while she's coming, Pastor Devin, I've been thinking about you. The very first time I came and preached at this church, the, word, the Lord gave me a word for you, and he said, the handmaidens are coming. And I've thought about that word a lot. I don't know why, but I've thought about that word for years. Why would you walk into a church you've never been to before, meet your friend's wife that you've never met before, and give her a prophetic word about handmaidens that are on the way? Five years ago, five years ago this June, in fact, it was June the 22nd, not that I have that good of a memory, I just remember I was on a date with Gina, hallelujah. But uh, I said, the handmaidens are coming. And I've thought about that word for a long time. And then when you all started adopting all of Chattanooga, I thought maybe the Lord was sending you people to help push the strollers. But I heard it echoing in my spirit today. Tell her the handmaidens are coming. The handmaidens are coming. Kind of like you heard those old prophets say, the camels are coming. The camels are coming. He said, tell her the handmaidens are coming. The handmaidens are coming. The young ladies that she's going to raise up to be prophets and be apostolic, godly, Pentecostal, young ladies of fire for this generation that will know how to prophesy, that will know how to be wives, that will know how to preach the word. You tell her the handmaidens are coming. There's a school of them that are coming and she'll raise them up in the admonition of the Lord. People will send their young ladies to this school and they'll say, Pastor Devin, train them up in the way they shall go. And so I prophesy to the daughter of the Lord and I say again, the handmaidens are on the way you'll have all the help you'll need you'll have all the assistance you'll need and you'll raise up a mighty generation of handmaidens that will go across the globe yea they will touch six continents and they will prophesy for my name's sake the handmaidens are coming saith the Lord I got words of the Lord for you three and I thought I was done, and then I saw you just kind of hanging out over there in the corner. You got people up here doing cartwheels and the splits, and then there, there, there you is. And I heard a song being sung over you that isn't very churchy, but it's not bad either. I heard the song, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Get ready for clarity of calling to come to you, my daughter. You're going to step into your own. You're going to know who you are and why you are who you are and what you've been called and birthed on this earth to do. The clarity is coming. The reign of confusion. The reign of this and that. It's going to just be so clear. You're going to know exactly who you are. And it's not going to take 20 years. It's not going to take 15 years. It's not even going to take five years. Something significant is happening in this season. And all of a sudden, you're going to say, Ah, now I know who I am and what God has for me. So get ready. For the angels of the Lord are singing over you that the rain is gone. And when I lay hands on you, handmaiden of the Lord, you get ready for a double dose of the Holy Ghost to come upon you. Somebody give him praise like it was your daughter. I saw you coming off on the floor and I saw you struggling and I heard the Lord tell me to tell you that the apron strings are being loosed this time because there's been other times where you needed help 
to get up, help to step in. Yet there was a mother, a grandmother, an auntie. There was people. But the Bi but this is what I heard the Lord say. It's, it's out of the Bible. It says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. What God is about to do for you. A family member won't be able to take the credit. A friend won't be able to take the credit. It's not going to be their prayer life. It's going to be your prayer life. It's not going to be their anointing. It's going to be your anointing. Hi, Pache. I say it's on you now. Woo. It's so strong. And when you were up there doing your thing, you were getting drunk. I saw the oil of joy all over you. And when I saw it, it was intoxicating me. I said, I want some of what God has given her. And so I pray that the oil of joy that the Lord has given to you, you would not be so selfish that you would keep it to yourself, but God would raise up a mighty soul winner in you and that wherever you go, joy would come. Wherever you go, deliverance would follow. Wherever you go, God would go. I say, I say the oil of joy in greater measure be upon thee. Samuel, I need you up here too. I'm coming back to you because your word's a little longer. I shook your hand and they said your name was Samuel. But when I shook your hand, I saw a, a, a light just, I saw a crown and I heard the word king. And I said, Lord, what does that mean? He said, what did I use Samuel for? in the Bible I'm going to be bold and if I'm wrong I'm not the pastor of the house so they'll put it in order but I prophesy over you tonight that you will speak to kings and queens you will speak to rulers in high places you will give them strategies for legislation and how things can be done you'll be the one that they call in the room and they'll say we're navigating this and that mayors and governors and presidents and kings and queens they'll say how do we do this and how do we do that our strategists don't know what to do our advisors don't know what to do but you'll be the prophet of the Lord that will walk in and say aha this is what thus saith the Lord I pray over you a kingdom anointing an apostolic anointing to speak to rulers in high places and I say that the Lord will use you for great and mighty things your hand will touch government your hand will touch leadership because you'll give God all the credit all the glory and all the honor and when you're in those rooms they'll say who is this who is this that advises who is this that speaks and they will raise their voice and say he is like a prophet he is like the prophet Samuel that spoke to Saul that spoke to David but he speaks to those of this generation and I say it's the word of the Lord Woo. For those of you that are in this room and this is your house of worship, I'm coming back to you. But I heard the Lord say to tell this church, don't let the anointing spoil. Don't you get so spoiled on the anointing, so used to this that you take it for granted and you let it expire because you don't praise them the way you used to praise them and you don't pray the way they because you think that they, if this becomes common God says I'll lift it and I'll put it so don't you don't you take it for granted because there's there are I heard about a family that drove in from Newfoundland that means they came from another country to get a dose of what you have this is your Wednesday night service? Do you understand some people have to go to a camp meeting the last night to get what you get on a Wednesday night? You ought to stop everything right now and give God praise that he planted you in this house. That your kids go to Sunday school at this house. That your students worship. You ought to give them praise. You could be anywhere. You could be in a toxic religious culture, 
You can be a part of a church that's got drama and corruption, but God said, I got my very best for you in Chattanooga. You ought to praise Him right now. those Holy Ghost antennas up for me. There's an evangelist who heavily influenced my life. His name's Freddie Clark. And he'd say, raise those hands because those are your Holy Ghost antennas. That's how you make connection with heaven. And then he'd say, look upon me for the eyes are the gateway to the soul. I saw you worshiping the Lord. And I saw, this is what I saw in the spirit. I saw a caterpillar dragon I mean dragon its body into a cocoon I saw a weary wounded tired caterpillar still moving still working still doing what they need to do to get to the place in the house of change I saw you in worship step into this cocoon and I saw metamorphosis take place in the Holy Ghost I saw when the change was coming over you while you were worshiping the Lord. I saw the beautiful butterfly that was being birthed while you worshiped the Lord. And here's the word of the Lord to you, my daughter. He says, tell her that times of refreshing have come, that the spirit of weariness and loneliness has come to an end. You were faithful alone. You were faithful when you were tired, but I brought you to a house of change and a house of rest, and I poured Pour out the oil of refreshing upon you. And I say, no more do you cry alone. No more do you battle alone. But I'm giving you a reason to be happy in this season. And I say, you've passed the test. So get ready for the next season is upon you. Say it, the Lord of hosts. You ought to praise him right now. You ought to praise him right now. Pastor Rod Parsley taught me something. He said, when I prophesy to you, I prophesy through you. God is no respecter of persons. If you need one of those words that they just got, I'd take it right now and just, I was prophesying through them to you. I say restoration comes, clarity comes, blessing comes. He, take that word upon your life right now. is Roger and I could be off on this one but if you own a business and you need healing specifically in your wrist or your arm if that's Roger if you're here would you run up here I want to pray for you aren't you glad you came to church on a Wednesday night hallelujah I wish I could remember your first name, but in honor of your dad, I'm going to call you Ronnie Harrison Jr. When you get back to Louisville, may there be an obvious, visible difference when you step in the room. May the people, not just your parents, but even the ones, this I'm, I'm being bold, maybe I shouldn't do it in the mic, but even the ones that hated on you, and even the ones that criticized and maybe even the ones that lied on you may they take their tongue off of you for they'll say there's something new about him a change a wonderful change has come over him I prophesy that the anointing not only of your father but of your mother is coming upon you in this season and I say you're going home a changed man I'm saying you're going to go home with a reason to celebrate for you're stepping into your now you prayed for one day one day one day but the Lord says one day is today so get ready for the greatest season of your young life it's upon you in Jesus name
this is how I know I'm in a Pentecostal church, Bishop. I just found bobby pins in the altar. Hallelujah. When we were growing up in church, you knew we had had good Sunday church when you couldn't run the vacuum because there was bobby pins all over the altar. That's how I know I'm still in a Pentecostal church. Is that Roger here yet that I need to pray for? That name won't leave me. So if you're here, what's that? If he's watching, put it in the comment section so I know to pray for you over the camera. But Roger, you're here. Before the end of the night, I'm going to pray for somebody named Roger. Hallelujah. 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 If you're close to me and you you are crowned, because I didn't feel it till about 30 seconds ago. If you're crowned with migraines, crowned with headaches, if that's you, I would run right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I was standing over where, where Bishop sits, I felt the Lord tell me to have communion. And then I looked down and conveniently enough, there was a communion cup. I said, praise the Lord. We don't have time to do it. I had no... I didn't know it was going to come on me, but I feel to tell you to celebrate communion tonight. When you get home, find something. If all you have is bread and water, you have it. Man, aren't you? Bl- <laughs> this is it. You, you all are playing here. I feel like something's going to be broken in communion tonight. The yoke is going to be broken through communion tonight. Healing is coming. Thank you. These, there's some more migraines that are still coming. Roger, once you get here, I want you, don't, don't you be bashful for waiting. You come tap me on the shoulder. Now, this one isn't by revelation. This is by smell, and not right now. And I'm not going to embarrass anybody. This is not about embarrassing anybody. It's what I, I know what I smelled. Don't raise your hands on it. But I break the addiction to vaping, smoking, puffing, chewing, and whatever else you can do with tobacco and nicotine. I take authority over that wicked addiction and spirit, and I break it off of our young people by the authority of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I take apostolic authority tonight, and I pray that if any tongue-talking child of God even puts one to their lips I pray that it would make them so sick they would start throwing up and they would never put another one to their tongue again I pray that right now by the power of the Holy Ghost you would be set free from that vice and you would never crave it you would never want it again and I say you're free by the power of God in Jesus mighty name now they're handing out communion I had no clue we were going to do this, but I'm following the leading of the Holy Ghost. I don't want there to be any condemnation in the house. I don't want anyone to not take it and say, well, preacher, you don't know what I did. I don't know what you did, but I know what he did. And what he did covers what you did. There's power in the blood. I break the spirit of condemnation, the spirit of religion off of the people tonight. We're going to celebrate communion. Seven years ago, I lost my first wife, Cole's mom. We lost her to leukemia. Every day for a year, we had communion as a family. Every day. When COVID hit a few years ago, the Lord instructed me to do it again. And every day we'd wake up and we'd have communion. There's something powerful about it. When Paul talks to the church, he talks about doing it often. We've left it as a religious routine that you do on Easter and maybe watch night. But you need to be reminded tonight that his body was bruised for your iniquities and that by his stripes we are healed. But I remind you tonight because there's going to be a mass move of healing in a moment. The New Testament writer says that by his stripes we were healed, past tense, because it's as much a part of the covenant of Calvary as salvation. After Calvary, You no longer will be healed. You were healed. 
Is everybody, is there a few people still waiting? Everybody served. You'll get that bread ready. Get your, go ahead and just open it. By the way, that was amazing. I've never seen communion served to that many people in that short amount of time ever. Y'all should give seminars on how to give communion. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white. And in the churches I was raised, we'd say, thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood that washes white as Father, I thank you for the body that was tortured so that I could be healed and delivered. I thank you that you suffered knowing how I was going to make you suffer. But knowing the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end, you still thought we were worthy of the sacrifice. I thank you for the Lamb of God. I thank you for Jesus who bore our iniquities on the cross. And I pray that as the people of God eat up this bread, I pray that healing virtue would flow through this house, touch them physically, spiritually, emotionally, and I hear the Lord say even financially, I'll heal them tonight. As you eat of that bread now, I want you to take in the healing virtue of God. Eat, eat of the bread. Father, hallelujah. I thank you for the blood that washes away all of my sins, all of my stains. I thank you that there's still power, power in the blood. And I pray that as your people drink of the blood tonight, as they drink from this cup, may they be empowered. May they be re-energized, refilled, and rebaptized. And may they go home to supernatural signs, miracles, and wonders in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And after you drink of that cup, I want you to praise him like you did 35 minutes ago when we were in high praise in this house. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Healing come upon you. Deliverance come upon you. The blessing of the Lord come upon you now by the authority of the word of God, by the power that's in the blood and the power that's in the name. Be healed, be free, be delivered now. There is power. Would you clap your hands and shout all over this house for the wonder-working power? The wonder-working power. Hallelujah. 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 Hey. Hallelujah. I'm really debating whether I ought to preach tonight. Hallelujah. 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 The Holy Ghost is a river. And when you step in, you just kind of get lost in it. And I looked upon you, sis, and I saw a beautiful coat of many colors. And I was admiring your coat. And then I heard the Holy Ghost say, She's just like Joseph. Because <laughs> she's got gifts that other people envy. 
She's got gifts that other people are jealous of. But just like Joseph, they can throw her in a pit, but she'll end up in a palace. Hey, hey, they can try to kill her, but she'll bring life to the people that tried to kill her. And I just feel that prophesy over you again because of your stand of integrity because of your stand for the truth God's bringing you into rooms that others say you don't deserve to be in houses you didn't buy vineyards you didn't plant buildings you didn't build but because you were a woman of integrity because you clothed yourself in holiness God says it's yours Ooh, and I see you feeding the hungry. I see the hungry coming to you, and you're feeding the hungry. I see it. Woman, there's so much resources coming to you. You won't, it's just like the Bible says. You won't have room enough to contain what God's about to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I don't think I'm going to preach the whole sermon. I think I'm just going to wrap it up. I'm going to tell you what I was going to preach to you. <laughs> Good Friday, Silent Saturday, which, by the way, wasn't so, sad, so silent if you read the Bible. And Resurrection Sunday. I had communion on Facebook every morning. And on Resurrection Sunday, as I was sitting in front of the computer getting ready to come on, and talk to the people I heard the Holy Ghost whisper in my ear tell them there's more and I said I because I had this this whole little fancy word about you know because he lives and and he said you just tell them there's more tell them don't get satisfied with the resurrection as if that is the end all to the end all you tell them there's more and I asked the Lord if you have that video make sure there's no sound on it but if you have that video play it behind me because this is what I saw in my office I saw an old infomercial from the 90s and listen I was a sucker I'm telling you I'm as gullible as they come because I would sit in front of those infomercials in the 90s and I bought every contraption I have that thing in my house. I have that pasta maker somewhere in my... I got all of this stuff. And this is where they get me. Stop it right there if you can. Stop the video. They would put up a value that I didn't have enough money in Chicago to afford. But once they told you the problem, the solution, and the price. And once you got to that point where you said, there's no way I can do it. The announcer would say, but wait. There's more. And they would take something that seemed so expensive and they'd say if you call in the next 10 minutes we'll give it to you for four easy payments of $39.99 plus shipping and handling and while you were counting your chickens and making sure if somehow you might be able to afford $39.99 over four payments play that video again they would come on and say but wait if you call right now, it won't be four payments of 39. It'll be four payments of 29. And that was my face. Wait, I'd wait till my mother was asleep and I'd go down and I'd get her credit card and I'd order every gadget that was on television. I had that belt that does sit-ups for you. You can be eating Twinkies and that thing will just be crunching your stomach for you. And on, that, on this Easter Sunday, I heard, that's what I heard in the spirit. You tell him, but wait, there's more. Just when you think you can't get what God has for you. Just when you think you can't afford this thing. Just when you think all hope and help is gone. The Holy Ghost speaks to you and says, hang on a moment. I got more on the way for you. Just when the wise men 
thought they had seen it all when a host of heaven's angels sang glory to the newborn king and they thought it was incredible to see an angelic choir sing heaven said just wait I got more on the way because I'm going to turn that baby into a miracle man and your eyes are going to see and your ears are going to hurt what you've never seen and never heard before and I said Lord I don't want to walk into redemption with such a silly video that looks silly and tell them more is on the way he said but it makes sense because doesn't it sound a little silly when a prophet gets up here and says if you'd spin in my presence God will set your family free that looks as silly as that woman with that handset on that on that I called it a microphone that phone that she dropped in that chocolate cake batter have I not told my people that if they'll sow, I'll give them a harvest that they won't have room enough to contain? And this is what I heard the Lord say to tell you. If you'll do a crazy thing for me this very night, if you'll do something crazy for me, something radical, something hysterical for me tonight, I'm going to give you more than you even asked me for. I'm going to give you more than you were even praying for. I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and I'm going to pour more out on you than you have room enough to contain for Ephesians 1 I'm closing by the way 15 through 19 says therefore after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus I don't cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The Amplified Version says that you would comprehend the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing glory of his inheritance in the saints. This father in the faith says, I really pray that you come to the wisdom and the revelation of who you are in Christ Jesus. And what is at your disposal? That you would understand that if he is the king of kings, the lowercase king isn't talking about the rulers of this world, but he's talking about you and I. Book of Revelations that says that now through Christ Jesus, we have now been made both kings and priests. So he is the king of kings. And he said, I hope that my children would understand who they are in the kingdom. And then it says... And that they would understand what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. The Lord said to prophesy to you that you are in the season of the exceeding greatness of God. Just, this is bad grammar, but just when you thought it got good, it's going to get gooder. Just when you thought it got great, I hear heaven say, but wait there's more just when you thought you've seen the greatest miracle that you've ever seen in your life God says I have more miracles than you've ever seen I got more on the way I'm going to exceed myself you thought it was amazing to see Sarah give birth to a baby in her 90s I'm the God that exceeds myself you thought a woman giving birth to a baby in her 90s was something a few thousand years later I'll take a young virgin girl and I'll cause her to give birth to I'm gonna exceed myself you thought throwing a dead man in Elisha's grave and bringing him back to life was something? I'm going to exceed myself and in Jerusalem at the place of the skull, I'll cause one to go into the tomb that'll bring eternity out forevermore. For I am the God that exceeds myself. And he said, you tell him. I'm going to exceed myself. Just when you thought this church had seen its greatest real estate blessing, God says, I'm going to exceed myself. Just when you thought you have reaped the greatest offering that this church has ever seen in a one-time offering, God says, I'm going to exceed myself. Just when you thought the miracle was that God allowed you to acquire the building, God says, now watch me exceed myself and cancel the debt and cancel the mortgage and bring it down to where you owe nothing. I am the God of more. Just when you thought you have stepped into every 
just when you think you know everything there is to know about God, he says, I'll take you into the many mansions of my house. Have you ever been in a rich person's home and you walk in a bedroom and you say, my God, my whole house could fit in the bedroom. He said, in my house, there are many mansions. Another translation says many rooms, but they're so big, they're like mansions. And the Lord says, I have things hidden in my kingdom that you have yet to step into. There are sermons that you have yet to preach. I have strategies that you have yet to talk about in a boardroom. I have places in my kingdom. I have places in my mansion that you are going to step in. And just when you say this is the epitome of it all, God says, I will exceed myself. Matthew 1 21 and you'll call his name Jesus for he shall save his people but then Hebrews says I have given him a more excellent name they called him Jesus until he went back to heaven but after the resurrection they never re merely referred to him as Jesus any longer for the Lord exceeded himself he was now known as the Lord Jesus Christ the resurrected one. I'm telling you that in this season, you're getting a new name. You're getting a new revelation. You're getting a new experience. The Lord is going to, just when you thought you got it all, he's going to exceed himself. Allow me to say this last thing and then we're going to close. Hallelujah. I was scribbling while you all were worshiping. He said, you tell him not to limit me. You tell them to take me out of their religious box where they contain me. And when you ask why, he said, my answer is because I can and because I want to. And that should be enough for them. This is what I heard him say. Just when you think you saw it all, I'm going to exceed myself. Just when you think it can't get better, I'm going to exceed myself. Just when you think God has done it all, I'm going to exceed myself. Just when you're about to hang up your hat, I'm going to exceed myself. And then this one, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But just when you think we're going to do one live recording and never do anything else. I saw a concert in this room that was so packed out with people. You, you couldn't get in even if you wanted to sneak them in. There's God. God is going to use this facility. For new things bishop i hope i'm not out of order but this building will be used for things you haven't even planned for but god will get the glory i see a live recording taking place in this house he didn't show me who the artist is but all i know is it's a fresh sound it's a new sound it's songs that have yet to be sung in other places but I, the Lord, just when you thought i have done it all the lord says i'm going to exceed myself I close with this hallelujah if you are called to evangelism if you're a soul winner if you just stretch out your hand wherever you are what I'm about to say is not it's not boastful it's not bragging it's so I, I want to speak over you what I've seen this year this year, I have, this is my 25th year full-time ministry. This year, I have personally baptized, water baptized more people this year than in any singular year of ministry. Today is, what, what month are we in? June? Is it June? May. It's May. May. And as of last weekend, I've now personally water baptized over 700 people. Now, I want you to understand, there is labor in the field but there is an ease to the harvest and if you'll call them don't argue about doctrine don't argue about your theology just call them to the waters of baptism I'm prophesying over this house that before the year is over I'm believing that you're going to water baptize more people this year than you have in any singular year in the history of this church for I say harvest time has come to RTTN I say harvest time has come and I say it's time to get in the field and it's time to reap a harvest I pray Holy Ghost Pentecostal 
Jesus' name, harvest over you in the name of Jesus. Baptize them in your bathtubs. Baptize them in your pools. Baptize them in jacuzzis. Wherever you can find a body of water, put them down in the water and raise them back to new life. I say harvest in the name of Jesus. Now I'm speaking life, but I, I, I feel, if I'm being sensitive, I feel the spirit of weariness. I, I, I do. I, I feel it. But I pray that it would break off of you today. I pray that it would just, whew, you'd wake up with a, I pray that when you go to sleep tonight, you'll feel the way it, you know, like the sixth night of vacation, when the rest finally comes. But I pray it won't, <laughs> it comes on the sixth and then you leave on the seventh. Vacation a little longer in the name of Jesus. But I pray that the spirit of rest would collectively come over many that are in this room. If you have those photos, this is what I feel to close with. I gave them all kinds of stuff tonight. I normally don't come with a bunch. Of, the, after, after Cole's wife, uh, after Cole's mom, my first wife, when she passed away, I went on a little sabbatical to Peru to go visit Machu Picchu. And I took a train up these mountains. I went by myself, went on a little hike, and I came to this beautiful city that was built over 1,600 years ago. The precision of this city, the, the architecture, the beauty of everything. I mean, it's, I've never seen anything like it. Show them the next photo. I mean, it's just this beautiful place that was abandoned over 1,600 years ago. And I was up there admiring the beauty of this city. And then show them the last picture. My tour guide, because I'm nosy. I know Bishop preached against gossip here recently. I, I saw the video, got convicted, but you know. Sometimes I get in the flesh and I like to hear what's up. And so I get a little nosy. And so I go back to the first, that one of those first pictures. I walked around all of this. And I went back here. Flip it. Yeah, that was back there. And when I came on that, I said, what is this? And my tour guide said, well, that's what I would call a pile of potential. I said, what do you mean? He said, this is where they stopped. He said, I want you to look at those rocks and imagine what could have been and what should have been. No one knows why they stopped building. No one knows why they abandoned the city. They don't know if it was a pandemic. They don't know if it was civil unrest. They don't know if everyone just killed each other. They don't know. All we know is this is where they stopped. And he said, I call it a pile of potential. 35 days earlier, I had buried his mother. I'm trying to be strong for my kids. And I'm trying to be strong in the ministry. And Pastor Hooper that's here from Georgia is one of my closest friends. Man, that man was with us in the hospital every single day that your mom was there. He'd bring donuts. He would hang out. He would just be. And this, you know you got a good friend when he'll laugh with you and rebuke you in the same, in the same dinner at the same time. The older you get, you find out you only get so many real friends. So when you get one, you hold on to it. Pastor Hooper tell you, I was acting strong. I was preaching. I was, but alone, I was a mess. And I said, I don't know. I don't know. We can go on. I don't know how we're going to do it. And then I went to the pile of potential. And I stood in front of that pile of potential. And I saw my funeral. And I saw people standing in front of a casket saying, could you imagine what he could have done? Could you imagine? Oh, you remember how he used to preach? Do you remember how he used to prophesy? And I just saw him shaking their head, looking down at me like a pile of potential. What could have been? I asked that tour guide to leave me there alone. I don't think Cole's ever heard the story. And I knelt down in those rocks. This is a very special place to me. I've not been back here. I told Gina I'm going to take her here. I knelt down at those rocks and I made a covenant with God at the pile of potential. I said, Lord, I'm going to leave this mountain and I'm going to keep preaching. 
I'm going to keep prophesying and I'm believing you for more. I'm believing you that this next season of my life is going to be the greatest season of my life. I'm going to see more people healed. I'm going to see more people saved. I'm, going to, I, I'm not going to let my life end in a pile of potential when you're the God of exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. And I come by the authority of God's Word to prophesy over you that your life doesn't have to end in a pile of potential. That marriage doesn't have to end in a pile of potential. That ministry doesn't have, there is a God that has more for you. And just when you think you've seen it all, I hear the voice of the Holy Ghost tell you, but wait, there's more. Would you lift up your hands and give Him praise in the house? I don't know who that word was for, but if it was for you, at the count of three, I would answer this Wednesday night altar call. Leave that pile of potential up there. Whatever it is, when you leave this altar, <laughs> you're not going home the same. You're not going home to the same death and destruction. You're not going home to the same old, same old. And I'm talking to some of you that are in victory as well. You're not going home to just the same old, same old victory. But there's a new level. There's a new place. There's a new room in the kingdom. You're going from glory to glory and victory to victory. This word applies to you whether everything's going right or any everything is going wrong. I'm here to tell you that the God of more than enough, the El Shaddai of the Old Testament is in this house. Great God Almighty, the God of more than enough. He didn't even wait for me to count to three. He's already in the altar. Don't let him come alone. One, two, three. If this word is for you. Because greater things are yet to come. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to make this altar a place of covenant. God, I'm not leaving. Satisfied? I'm not leaving content. I've come for more. More of your glory more of your power, more of your spirit, more miracles, more signs, more wonders. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. There's a grandmother that needs to come for her grandchildren. There's an uncle that needs to come for his nephews and nieces. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want you to lay that heavy burden on the altar. Thank God we're in a church that knows how to have altar calls. But if you're visiting from somewhere else and you've come, but you don't know what to do, this is your moment to respond to the word. This is where heaven and the earth collide right now. Here's where you lay it on the altar. Whatever the problem, whatever the issue, whatever the circumstances, say, God, I can't hold this any longer. I can't carry it any longer. I can't, I don't have the answers. I've tried to deal with it all by myself and I, I can't. So I've come to lay it at the altar. I've, I've come to lay it at your feet and I'm making a decision right now. I'm not going to end as a pile of potential. Not when you're the God of more than enough. Not when you have more rooms in your mansion for me. Not when you have more blessing and more authority. Not when you have greatness. Come on, lay it on the altar. Lay it on the altar. Talk to him. Talk to him. You told everybody on Facebook about it. You've tweeted about it. You've snapped about it. Now pray about it. Lay it on the altar. I pray that El Shaddai, the God of more than enough, 
great God Almighty would make himself real to you that his name would be more than just the lyrics to a song or a verse in scripture or a Hebrew term that you hear in a sermon but I pray that this truth of God would be revealed in your life and exemplified in your circumstance I pray that God would give you more more blessing more abundance more prosperity more glory more anointing I pray that a holy dissatisfaction would come upon the people of God that they never would be content with what they merely have and say this is it but they'd say if this is all I've said there must be more there must be more I pray that there would be a holy pursuit for the more of God that we would know him in the fullness of his power the fullness of his resurrection that we would know who we are through Christ Jesus when I was a young man I'd come to the altar there was days that I wanted an impartation I wanted a touch and, and, and I just believed that if the preacher could get to me and lay their hands on me I just believed that God would do something in that moment you came to that altar with that spirit you came here oh if he would just lay hands on me if he would just call me out I just know well here it is your faith pulled on me like a magnet and pulled me to where you are so when I lay my hand what's in your hand I don't need to say what it is do I in the name of Jesus it's broken off of you when I lay my hand on you you are free by the power of God when I lay my hand on you, you are empowered by the Spirit of God. When I lay my hand on you, you're no longer bound by condemnation. You're no longer bound by death. You're no longer bound by lies. When I lay my hand on you, you will be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. You will speak with new tongues. Here comes what you've been seeking for. Five, four, three, two, one. Fire! Take it, take it, take it, take it! Bring them to me, bring them to me, pick them up and bring them to me. Like fire in your belly. Like fire in your belly. I pray the gift of the Holy Ghost come upon you now. Speak it out in tongues. God's given you the Holy Ghost. Come on, speak it out, speak it out, speak it. Fire! I hear Pentecost in the house. I hear freedom in that. You want to pray like it's your son. Hey, Jesus. I don't, I don't want to embarrass you. Bishop, when I get in it, I get excited. If I get wrong, he's the boss. He'll fix it. I don't want to embarrass you. I don't, I, I love the old church. I love, I, I mean, I love Pentecost. But I don't want to embarrass anybody. I don't want anybody to feel bad. But there's, a, I don't think he's the only one that need to leave something on the altar tonight. Now, for some of you, it is a thought process. It is a, a mindset. It, it's a, but some of you, it's something in your pocket. It's something in your purse. It's something on your person. And I'm not going to make you do it. But I'm just telling you, that was a very bold young man who brought his stuff to the altar. And God just filled him with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. What? Do you think God would only do it for him and he wouldn't do it for you? Tonight is the night of more than enough. 
this is this is the night that you get set free this is the night when everything changes so if there's someone else you just chuck it up here and i won't even call you out don't even worry and listen if it might cause you to get in trouble and you need to be slick willy and just drop it and walk away that's cool too ma'am in the what do you call those the the scrubs yes ma'am i looked upon you and i know you're a female but in the spirit i saw an abraham the first of many anytime you see an abraham you see the the beginning of something that god is going to do in a family line and in a lineage and i looked upon you and i said she's the first there was stuff that was running in the family i, I wish i had come up with it I don't know who said it first, but someone said it ran in the family until it ran into me. There was some stuff in that family line until it found you and it stopped. And I hear the Lord tell me to tell you, you have nothing to worry about of the future generations. You are an Abraham, which means there's an Isaac, there's a Jacob. There is a generational blessing that started with you. And I'm telling you, this is what I, I just feel to tell you. You're going to, with your eyes, are going to see many graduate from high school. You're going to see many graduate from college. You're going to see abundance and blessing over your family line. And you're not going to be the only one dragging people to church. But you're going to see the ones that you drug to church dragging their children to church. And I say generational blessing is upon you. Generational salvation come upon your family. May the entire family line serve the Lord. And may May this praying mother, this praying woman, prayer not be in vain. I say the Lord says, I have seen your altar. I have seen your sacrifice. And now you will see my fire, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I guess I'm going to give it to the bishop. I got that preaching spirit on me. I got five teenagers at home. I think, I think we're not stepping into, I think we are in a season of, in a, of abundance and prosperity like we heard about for you for you that follow Christianity we heard things from the word of faith we heard things from certain people but we heard it and then our eyes had never seen but I believe we are in the season of abundance I, I've heard that a recession is coming for like three years I thought it already came and then last week I heard no it's still coming and I heard the Lord speak to me and he said, while the world says recession, 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 my people will say revival, revival, revival. This recession will not come upon the children of God, not upon the people of the covenant. Their blessing will be their testimony in this season. When people see you change upgrading houses and they see blessing in your house and they see new car i know it's not all about that but hear the word of the lord when they see upgrades in your life and they see blessing in your life somebody's gonna finally knock on the door and say listen i gotta know i got to know how and why and you're gonna say because i'm a tither because i'm a sower i'm a giver i don't invest in bitcoin and dogecoin and sheba i invest in the kingdom of heaven and there's no inflation in the kingdom there's no recession in the kingdom there's no such thing as a bull market or a bear market this is the lion's market we go from glory to glory victory to victory and so if I believe the word, then I act on that word. I got five teenagers at home. It's a lot. So we bought ourselves a little business on the side over there in the Tri-Cities. Come, come visit. Say you're from RTTNN, we'll give you 10 cents off. We bought this little shaved ice business that's been there for 30 years. And one day I was getting me, because you know, I like me a little shaved ice. I like a little treat here and there. And I got, I saw it was for sale. 
And so, long story short, we went ahead and bought it. Because I got five teenagers that need jobs. And no longer will I hear, the schedule doesn't work with my lifestyle. Because <laughs> they're all hired, and they said, what's the schedule? I said, whenever I tell you to go. What does it pay? Whatever I say. That's why Cole's trying to escape and come to Chattanooga. Hallelujah. But I was in the, I was in the hut. I get a sermon out of anything. But I feel like this is applicable to you. And then I'll shut up, I promise. But it has to do with the more than enough. I was in the hut. And the, and the old owner, Mark, was showing me how it works. He, you know, so I could teach my kids and the other people who can work there. So we were standing in front of this ice machine with, with a cup. And he pushed the pedal and pulled this crank. And the ice just came gushing out and filled the cup. I mean, it filled the cup in like three seconds. And he said, now, this is the important part. The cup looks full, right? I mean, he's talking to me like I'm in preschool. The cup looks full, doesn't it? Uh Uh-huh. He said, it's not. I said, what do you mean? He said, once you push the pedal and you fill it the first time, here's what you do. And he told me, he sounded like he's a preacher. He said, now, here's what you do. Take notes, shake it up, press it down, and shake it again. And I'm too churchy. To hear that and not react. I could be in a hut with shaved ice or in a cathedral like this. And that will come on me. (laughs) He said, press it down and shake it up. And I said, whew. And he thought it's because it's cold. He didn't know. I get the the Holy Ghost shock and come on me. You know, it hit me anymore. I said, and then what? He said, then you push the pedal and you fill it with more. And I said, and then what? He said, you do it again. You press it down. You shake it up. And I already knew the answer, but I needed to hear it. And at that point, I'm stomping, okay? I'm like, I'm like 1997 T.D. Jakes. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. I mean, I'm like doing the whole stomp and everything right there. I said, "Uh, uh, Mark, why do you press it down and shake it up? (laughs) He said, because you have to make room for more. And I said, Lord. I'm here to tell you that just when you think heaven has poured out everything he has for you, here's the word of the Lord. He's going to send his angels and they're going to press it down. They're going to shake it up and you better make room for more of God in your... I'm here to prophesy over you that God has sent his angels to Chattanooga to press it down and to make room for more. If that's your word, I shout like you haven't shouted in the last two hours. Shout like it's for your children, for your money, for your marriage. Shout because more, more, exceeding more. Give them praise and glory in this house right now. Come on, hug three or four people and tell them there's more, there's more, there's more. Come on, find somebody and tell them there's more, there's more, there's more. Hallelujah. Help me tell Tony Soros you love him. Come on, this has been a rich deposit tonight. Let the house of the Lord give honor where it is due. We praise you, Father, for what you've done tonight. Stand with me all over this room. I want us to take our neighbor by the hand right now. I want us to pray for a sealing of the blessing. Lord, we thank you for the word. There is more. We recognize that the enemy would come to steal the seed, so tonight the seed is sealed. It falls on good soil. We thank you that it will not be choked out by the cares of this life. It will not be scorched up because it fails to... bring forth roots 
It will not be devoured by the birds because it did not fall on the wayside. Tonight it fell into good soil. So I thank you for a hundredfold harvest on the word. God, I felt that. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, it will work in ways that we didn't even apply it. This word is going to manifest in ways we didn't even anticipate it. This word is going to bring forth fruit in ways we didn't even expect. Somebody who didn't even get prophesied to is going to walk in the word that was released over this place and in these lives tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, praise us. Somebody do something and act like it's happening for you. I declare in the name of the Lord that this week, Father, the balance of this week, there'll be a manifestation on this seed sown. Thank you for the harvest that's coming. I've received everything that you said to us tonight. And as Mary said to the angel, I say it to heaven tonight, be it unto me, Lord, according to thy word. So, Father, we mix faith with what we have heard. We cast off doubt and we remove all heaviness. And tonight with garments of praise, we thank you for what you have said and done. Now seal it. Keep the Holy Ghost in and keep the enemy out. We praise you for what you're going to do. Bless this Sunday with abundance and overflow in every campus and all that's being done. We pray you get the glory for it. Stretch your hands toward this preacher tonight. Father, we thank you for Tony Soares and what you're doing in his life. And we pray, God, the strength of the Holy Spirit upon him in the name of Jesus. Open doors that no man can shut. Go before him and keep him in everything that he does. I pray for supernatural abundance, significant doors of opportunity to come. And give him stewardship over this season so that it does not overcome him, but he overcomes everything that the enemy would try to bring against him. We thank you for sure and clear victory over his family, over his marriage, over his health, over his finances. We bless him now in the name of Jesus and for your glory. Everybody in the church said amen. Let's give God one more praise. I love you, family. Go in the peace of the Lord tonight. I'll see you this weekend. May the Lord bless you. Bring 16 people to church with you. And let's trust God for breakthrough this weekend. Go in the peace and the blessing of God.